Next, we'll travel to a romantic French chateau, where some ghostly mischief terrifies guests into late night calls for help. I heard at the phone uh, a very anxious and small and I say, please, I don't understand. Say it much. And the lady at the, uh, at the end say, The ghosts aren't the only ones who can't seem to rest in peace in a haunted hotel. The southwest of France is home to a region bursting with castles, known as the Perigord Noir. People in this area, they say that uh, when God had to put the chateau in France, he, he puts all the castle in a big uh, napkin. And when he was flying over that region, the, the, the napkin opens, and a lot of chateau fell down. But the 10th century Chateau de Romagus is said to have one feature that sets it apart from all the rest. When she has in her room, uh, a lady, she doesn't lie, she can, in the, during the night, uh, open the windows, put wind in the room, uh, also turn, turn the lock of the room. Chateau de Romegus was restored in the 19th century and now operates as a luxury hotel and restaurant. For me, it looks uh, mainly like uh, the castle of Snow White and the seven uh, small boys. You've got a tower, a circular tower, and you have a, a massive building against the, that tower. You have a terrace also overlooking the valley. During the 12th century, the lady of the castle was Resplandine de Remiac. Resplandine's fiancé had gone with the first crusades to Jerusalem, and every day she waited by her window always hoping to glimpse him returning at last from the war. At this time, the, there was no post office. The mail was not working very well, so it took about one year before she knew he was died. Resplandine was shattered when she learned her waiting was over. Her fiancé would never return. Without hope and without her love, she refused all food gazed out her window and willed herself to die. And she died of love, as we say in French, mourir d'amour. Since that time, uh, her phantom, the ghost, is in, in the chateau. Those who stay in the chateau overnight often hear the sound of footsteps in the corridors and on the stairs. You heard the noise from the bottom of the corridor arriving in front of your door, exactly like somebody walking. Resplandine seems unwilling to share her room and often appears displeased to find the door locked. Sometimes she turned the lock of the room, so the people in the room, they, they see the lock turning from right to left, left to right. Such nocturnal activity has alarmed guests. The last problem was with a couple, and during the night, somebody came and pinched a man on the leg, and he thought it was his wife, but it wasn't his wife. The customer was not very pleased in the morning, so we say we must stop her, because what she's going to do tomorrow? Though Resplendine apparently enjoys keeping others awake, she dislikes having her own rest disturbed. I remember one night I was working with a hammer. Each uh, knock of the hammer I was giving, there was uh, like an echo. So I stopped and I gave one. I wait. I have one answer. I give two. I had two answers. I give three. Three answers. I say, my God, what's happening? Resplandine is not happy. I suppose she wants to sleep. So I said, well, okay, I, I'm finishing. I will do that tomorrow. Bye-bye. I go to sleep. And I left. Resplandine's odd sense of humor has given rise to some frantic phone calls from guests late at night. I have the pleasure about uh, midnight to hear that the phone uh, a very anxious and small 
And I say, please, I don't understand. Say, and, and the lady at the, uh, at the end say, help, help. And I rush in the room and she's being me that the windows are open. Somebody's turning. There is a man who wants to come in my room. No, madam. No, man. Just, a, just an old poor girl from the past. Coming up, we'll visit a former church where the ghost of a minister delivers a service that terrifies guests. One of our guests would hide under the covers because the ghost would approach him. We're talking about a full-grown man just hiding and shaking. How do you make sure your guests will still be there in the morning when your bed and breakfast is thought to be haunted? In 1888, when its doors first opened in Ventura, California, the Victorian Rose Inn was a Methodist church. This is the last remaining church of its vintage in Ventura. Unfortunately, all the other ones have been torn down and eliminated years ago. The minute I saw the building, it just was so romantic. It was so beautiful. To me, it looked like a big dollhouse. Caught up in transforming the neglected church into a bed and breakfast, the new owners of the Victorian Rose did not realize that their dollhouse might already be inhabited. As we were getting closer to opening, people would come in and mention, uh, do you know about the ghost? And I always laughed it off, and I never thought it was anything of any consequence until more and more people started seeing things, feeling things, and sensing things. So. I, I have certainly become a believer there's something other than human entities in the building. People tell lots of different stories that gives credence to the theory that this inn is one of the most haunted places in California. The spiritual atmosphere of the old church has been carefully preserved. As you walk through the um, double sets of front doors, you come into the entry, and if you would look all the way up, you could see the top of the bell tower or the steeple. As you stroll around the entry, moving into the sanctuary, you're barraged with pump organs and player pianos and a lot of religious pieces that seem to blend in and go in so nicely with our motif here. But organs and pianos cannot be held responsible for the music that is heard high above the old sanctuary. Our own experiences have been constant noises upstairs. This has happened so many times that when we hear things, we don't even come upstairs anymore. The heart-rending cadences of one particular sound have been heard resonating again and again throughout the old church. We've had people walk in from outside and, and want to stay with us, and then I suggest them staying in the emperor's room, and they've said to us, no, I can't stay up there. There's somebody singing all the time. The present location of the emperor's room may give a clue to the identity of the phantom voice. The emperor's suite is above the main sacristy. That was built right where the choir loft was located. The most incredible part of that bedroom is on the very top landing, you can overlook the sanctuary. And our ceilings are 26 foot high. The view from the old choir loft is heavenly, but just high enough to be treacherous. A woman was very dedicated to the church, a, a member in good standing that led the choir, who would practice with the choir in the loft above the sacristy. Until one day, the music came to a sudden and deadly stop. During the practice, she was walking back and something distracted her. For some reason, she backed up against the low railing and slipped and fell over the railing to the pews below. And there, her neck hit just right.
The freak accident proved fatal. She had fallen any other way, she may have broken a bone, but lived, but she fell just right and it snapped her neck. Today, some guests take pains to avoid sleeping in the loft of this fallen angel. We had one lady that was going to stay with us several days. She liked the idea of staying in a different room each evening. Um, I offered the Emperor's Suite to her as one of them, and she said she couldn't stay up there because there's somebody singing. Many guests wonder what keeps this spectral singer from finishing her song and moving on. I think she doesn't know she's dead. I think she's still trying to perform the solo she practiced so many decades ago. The bizarre happenings at the Victorian Rose have been well documented in each room's journal. The stories in those books read like, like something out of horror fiction. The most surprising journal entries seem to indicate that the owners of the Victorian Rose are not the only ones tending to the needs of their guests. We've had people that remember a figure, and it always is the same slender, balding man with a black jacket on, like a minister's outfit, that seems to just watch over people and look at them. A number of our guests have said that he's tucked them in and stroked their hair. This dark figure has been described again and again by many different guests. Several different people in the same room at different times had reported the same description of the man. The owners of the inn feel there is no reason for concern. There is a roaming minister that actually takes care of our guest. He just seems to view them and, and make sure they're all okay and, and leaves after a short while. Not all guests appreciate such personal contact. One of our guests would hide under the covers because the ghost would approach him and he didn't want to deal with them. I mean, we're talking about a full-grown man just hiding and shaking. The mysterious minister seems to be searching for a flock to tend. No one says this is an evil ghost. In fact, if anything, he seems to be quite helpful and interested in people's dilemmas and problems. Perhaps he's trying to continue his calling in the afterlife. It seems like people get trapped in some state of limbo. For some reason, the minister feels like he has to still stay here and take care of his congregation. No one knows the minister's history but he may have had a tragic end of his own. It's possible that he died um, before his time. It could be that he doesn't know he's dead. He is continuing his work, planning to just remain behind for just a while longer, not knowing that it has been many decades. Can it be that using the old church for secular purposes has stirred up its spirits? Keep in mind this was a church for 70 years. It really wasn't set up to be a, a place to live in or sleep in. So I, I think some of these experiences probably have happened because we've changed the use of the building. It's no longer a house of prayer. Though no longer a place of worship, some feel the Victorian Rose still fulfills a spiritual need. I know a lot of people have become believers once they leave here that there's something else in the world other than a human aspect. Whether they reveal their presence through music or mischief, hotel ghosts all seem to ignore the dimension of time. When a person tunes in, on the other side, it's 80 years, 2,000 years, 60 years. It doesn't matter if something horrific happened or something unknown stayed in that specific room. You feel that. I think that some ghosts are linked to the fabric of time. I believe that there's, a, you might say, holes or warps in time. And occasionally, just rarely, we can see into the past. 